to a pretty major story. On August 8th, two giant pandas made their debut at the San Diego Zoo. Uh, the four-year-old male and three-year-old female said goodbye to their home in China a couple of months ago. The U.S. and China agreed to resume its panda diplomacy program, and California Governor Gavin Newsom also proclaimed their debut as California Panda Day, just to mark that momentous occasion. We want to talk all about this now by bringing into the conversation Marco Went. He is a wildlife ambassador for the San Diego Zoo Wildlife Alliance. Marco, thank you for taking the the time. I know it's been very busy, a pandemonium. I, I just had to say it. Um, but <laughs> let's start the conversation by you telling us a little bit about this pair that just arrived. Yeah, of course. Yeah, an excellent pun on the word, my friend. No, it, you're exactly right. It's it's infectious here in San Diego. It's all about panda, of course. Panda Ridge, San Diego Zoo, of course. Now, we have two giant pandas, in case you're Viewers, listeners are not aware. So we have a male and a female. Our male, his name is Yun Chuan. Now, Yun means cloud, and Chuan means river. So he's quite literally a big river of cloud. And he, by the way, his personality, super laid back panda. He likes to sleep in the morning, which I totally identify with. Uh, he loves a uh, priority, his bamboo breakfast takes a little midday siesta, and then some more crunching on that delicious bamboo. Now, we have a four-year-old female. Her name is Xingbao. Now, Xingbao means a precious treasure of prosperity and abundance, and it's very fitting for her. Uh, her personality, she's super curious. Uh, she is a very intelligent panda, very bright-eyed. And overall, you know, pandas, they represent friendship, uh, they represent love, and most importantly, they represent wildlife conservation. So we're so excited. Oh my gosh, I love that so much. Well, especially talking about the male panda. I'm like, yes, I can live that life too. I just want to eat, take Same. a nap, chill all day. <laughs> They're living the life there yeah. in the San Diego 100%. Zoo. <laughs> uh, Marco, a few months ago, when China took back their pandas from, I believe it was the Smithsonian over in DC. I mean, it was just huge news. Everyone was like, no, the pandas are gone. As though you can tell really that the public enjoys and treasures these moments with these pandas. But tell us a little bit about how you were able to get both of those here to the San Diego Zoo. How did that whole process kind of come about? How long did it take? Yeah, of course, you know, it, we have a long collaboration uh, with our partners, the China Wildlife Conservation Association out in China. And, you know, to, to your point, I will say, as opposed to giving them back or the contract ending or whatever the terminology people have been using, I want to highlight one thing. You know, the world's a beautiful place, many different traditions, and China has a beautiful tradition that every sunrise has a sunset, right? Every beginning has an end. So this was part of that culture and belief system. So we definitely at San Diego Zoo Wildlife Alliance wanted to honor that. So that's why we had a 30-year relationship with our partners. And it took, uh, for this particular collaboration, a few years in development to start planning everything out and beginning these conservation efforts. And to remind your viewers as well, in our past relationship collaborations with our partners in China, we were able to successfully bring down the population of China, the status of giant panda, from endangered to vulnerable, which is amazing news, but we have a lot more work to do. So whether it be us, uh, other uh, zoos, uh, institutions in the United States, and again, with our partners in China, it, it's really the collective work that we can all do together to help out this really amazing species. And that's really just the point of this whole thing. Of course, we as the public, we get to enjoy them, but there's a much deeper min meaning that goes behind this when it comes to conservation and just helping these wildlife animals thrive out there. Uh, tell me, any contingencies with how long these pandas may stay here in the U.S.? Uh, are they on loan? I mean, we know they're on loan, but how long does the public <laughs> yes. have to enjoy them? Yeah, no, uh, there is there is a loan process. And again, uh, as I mentioned earlier with two traditions, it's going to be an active partnership with our China partners in this panda conservation efforts we're about to do. And this is going to be a few years in the making, so plenty of opportunities for our guests to come to Panda Ridge and visit Yun Chuan and Xingbao. And uh, to remind the viewers as well, you know, working and helping giant pandas, it's what we call a flagship species. And by that, I mean, think of them like an umbrella species. So by helping out a giant panda, we're also going to be helping out a variety of many other plants and animals. For instance, you're seeing video right now of our pandas munching away at that beautiful, delicious bamboo. Bamboo in itself needs protection as well. Hundreds and hundreds of species of bamboo. So again, these collective efforts are not only going to help out those, specifically where we're going to be focusing on those smaller populations in China, pandas that need that diversity, genetic diversity, but also help out animals like the crested ibis and the, and the snow leopard, the Chinese alligator. I remind people how much 
important the word diversity is, not just for human beings, but also for wildlife conservation. You know, Marco, I almost feel bad bringing us back on camera because I know that the viewers are just trying to take a look <laughs> at that video. And I'm going to showcase the throw out here because they're just so adorable and so enthralling, really, to watch them there. Let's talk a little bit more about these conservation efforts and really what you learn in your zoo about these giant pandas, getting to study them. And really, over the last several decades, how much that really has helped both them in the wild and also the ones that are in captivity. Now, exactly. You know, as I mentioned before, with uh, the pandas under human care here at San Diego Zoo, in the past, again, we dropped out that conservation status. So it's by the International Union of the Conservation of Nature that establishes these populations for specific animals. And anyone can log on and see the status. So again, we still have much more work to do. To give you another example of some of the collaborative, successful work we were able to do in the past with, of course, the global support of the community of the world uh, was also to help out with infant survival rates. In particular, we were able to help formulate panda milk for those panda youngsters who don't have a mom that can take care of them. So we were able to formulate this milk that uh, our, eight, our partners could use out in China, and we were able to bring up the success rate, the survival rate of those giant panda cubs from 10% to 90%. And of course, you know, we were very good at making panda babies, which I'm sure the public is where, well aware of. In fact, I can use uh, Yun Shuan, or male panda, as an example. So his name I mentioned is Big River of Cloud, but there's an homage to his name as well, the word Yun. Now, his grandmother is Bai Yun, one of the first pandas that came here at the San Diego Zoo, who produced so many baby pandas to help out with panda conservation. In fact, um, Yun Shuan's mother, Zhen Zhen, was also born at the San Diego Zoo. So all these different examples. And I mentioned earlier, with this future partnership, we're going to be sharing all the information. You know, we're very good at what we do at San Diego Zoo Wildlife Alliance. So sharing information from what kind of bamboo do pandas like to eat? What part of the bamboo do they like to eat throughout the year? It could be their physiology. We're going to be sharing genetic information that we learn here. Uh, not only wildlife care teams, but our wildlife care conservation scientists also are part of these endeavors and these efforts and i mentioned those isolated populations of pandas in these regions so we're talking southwestern china uh, provinces like Shaanxi, as an example sichuan and some of these areas there's small pockets of isolated populations of panda that we need to help support we need that genetic diversity to make sure pandas are healthy and happy and stable in the future just so many wonderful things that are coming out of this partnership and this research and not just for the public. Uh, Marco, I have to ask, how do you take care of these pandas? And also, how can I apply for that job? Uh, I know. <laughs> everyone wants to be a panda specialist, right? But to, re to remind everyone, you know, again, we're San Diego Zoo Wildlife Alliance. We are very good at what, what we do. My personal background is being a zookeeper. Now we use the term wildlife care specialist. So whether it be a giant panda, or polar bear, an oxalotl to a platypus, a condor to a rhino, uh, we always offer species-specific behavior and experiences. So for in this particular instance, we're talking about a bear species, which I really want to remind guests, because everyone keeps asking me, you know, how they look so cute, and don't you ever want to just hug them? I mean, it looks like a good idea, but I would not recommend it. Think about this. This is still a bear species. Think of the grizzly bear, the black bear, and the polar bear. Then the panda and the polar bear have something very in common. They're specialized bears. For instance, a polar bear, over 90% of their diet is ring neck seal. Now, for the panda bear, it's a little bit different. We're talking about a plant, a bamboo, many different species of bamboo, but this is a bear with a very powerful jaw structure that can actually rip and break open those, those combs, those really hard structures of bamboo, as you can see from the video, and they're adapted to do this, even with a prehensile thumb, a movable thumb they can use to grasp the bamboo. So we still want to respect these bears as what they are and offer everything that they need from their natural habitat, uh, from the valleys, the steep cliff faces, and when our viewers or guests that come here to San Diego Zoo and enter Panda Ridge, you're going to be immersed in that vibrant area of southwestern China. Marco, such a good point that you just made because, you know, I might be part of those visitors that are like, oh, they're so cute. Just go up and hug them. <laughs> they look so sweet. But I mean, you're right. It's a bear. So even though it just eats bamboo, I mean, you know, still God, have to respect the wildlife. So we really do admire everything that you guys do there at the San Diego Zoo. Marco, before I let you go, anything that you feel that you need to add that you would like our viewers to know and maybe just even sharing this excitement with everybody. 
I love this question, friend. And this is what I really want to tell all your viewers out there that, you know, we can't do this alone. Yes, we're, we're a world renowned international nonprofit organization, hundreds of collaborators from governments, countries, nonprofits, individuals as well. But it's you, all you kids out there in particular, you have the power. Pandas are not only for the emperor of the world, but also for the kid from the barrio. Everyone is going to have a chance to see a giant panda and take part in conservation. And that's what we offer here at San Diego Zoo Wildlife Alliance. When you walk through our doors, whether it be the San Diego Zoo or the Safari Park, you're directly contributing in panda conservation, or it could be oxalotl or, or a golden eagle. There's so many species that need our support, and it takes a community to do that, that all you kids out there are future conservationists, and you have this opportunity when you leave the park in the zoo your heart's going to be filled with hope knowing that you're part of something bigger than all of us and we're all uniting together for a world where all life can thrive and I think really that's the important message and I do love that thought just thinking about pandas bringing us all together uh, bridging that gap Marco went there he is the wildlife ambassador for the San Diego Zoo Wildlife Alliance we appreciate your time and really please check in soon I would love to hear all the latest when it comes to this panda pair